if you have a spiritual reference point it would be wise to hold it aside because i probably won't be speaking to that and if you have an educational reference point it'd be nice to hold that aside because i probably won't be speaking to that uh, on the same level and if you have a heart open it because that's where i'm going and i'm a real hellion to get into the person's heart because i've found out that the heart knows everything and the heart can do anything but it won't do everything and because that seems to be where people on the planet are going at this particular time and not just in this room but on the planet it's just nice to go into the heart and let the heart speak its wisdom to us because it does have the wisdom that the intellect will not have the heart is the intelligence and another way of looking at that would be called your divine ignorance because it only lets you know what it wants you to know just prior to the utilizing the information now here's the rub with that all the uh, great religious groups all seem to say something like this repent then receive the kingdom of heaven now that sounds real nice and most of the people on the planet are saying let me see what the kingdom of heaven looks like to first see whether it's worth repenting <laughs> and uh, it doesn't work that way in the movement of spiritual inner awareness we say don't believe what you hear don't believe what you read because liars can write it and liars can speak it but have the wit to check everything out inside of you I have seen people who started out with the most honest type of integrity and certainly uh, seemingly very pure in their approach to life and dealing with people and over the course of years somehow they got corrupted and they fell and they took the group right down with them and I have people work with me that part of their prime job is if I seem to get off the straight and narrow would you mind just pointing it back out again because there's nothing quite so odorous as somebody who sits up and professes a form of spirituality and then turns around and manipulates that against your own well-beingness and there are too many people doing that under the guise of religion and spirituality I'm not one of those I haven't been up to this point don't let me do it to you and that process is called you check it out and you listen and one way that you will find out for sure is that if the experience of your life moves upon you by way of your spirit that will be the way you can validate it if it just sounds like it fits what you know it may just be one more fool talking to another fool and that's why I'm saying take your reference points and put them aside because they may be perfect and they might not be and if they're not perfect and I pick up on your thought patterns and play it back to you as perfection I trap you in your own ignorance again don't want to be involved in that and if I suspected for a second that I were I'd get up and walk out the door because there are far more valuable things to do than to attempt to mislead people who come to you with a sense of openness and saying just share with me who you are and what you are and folks if that's not enough that'll be tough because that's all I can do and I'm not going to play off an intellectual game on on your head nor anything else like that but I am telling you this I can move in the spirit and with your spirit and that spirit will move to this room because and I don't control spirit it's always done it and it only makes a few conditions upon me one is that as it stops moving I stop when it moves I move so I do not move independently from that action that's a spirit those are my ground rules by which I want to deal with you now look at those ground rules if that doesn't suit you then please would you just leave at this point because I don't want to inflict anything upon you and if everybody's staying then I just like to continue right on and just hold with that form and see if the spirit can reveal something more to us about us that maybe we know 
maybe we suspected and maybe what you're going to hear is just more mundane na na nu nu that you've known for years that'll be nice to find out that you still know the thing for years we've heard in a lot of the uh, groups and I use that in a great big wide term the concept of light and the concept of loving and the concept of life l-i-f-e so let me run my definition for you what it is life is this material level that you see and light is the action of the mind as it moves to the material level and it reveals itself to us by way of information by way of clarification and love or loving is the spirit that we are often called the soul for lack of a better word and if you're a scientist an energy unit and for the people who say it doesn't matter soul and for you people that follow Eastern thought the Atma now we've covered everybody okay I just want to talk a little bit about the mind and what that mind does and how it moves because we've all supposedly got one and yet we seem to be having the most difficulty with ourselves as a personality dealing with the mind. Uh, it goes something like this. I wish my mind would leave me alone. My mind runs me in circles. I sit down to meditate and my mind just goes antsy on all the things in the world that it's got to do. But gee, I'm so spiritual. Why does all that happen to me? Well, <laughs> The mind's a yo-yo, first thing. <laughs> if you just get that it's a yo-yo, it takes some of that sting off that uh, you're not being spiritual or doing spiritual things when your mind starts doing what I call the monkey thing. It just monkeys around and it chatters and it jumps from here and it jumps from there. <laughs> and, and there's great difficulty with that too. Because at the same time that you think you like somebody, it says, I don't know, maybe they're stepping out on you. And you go, oh, why did I need that? I, I don't need to think that. Or somebody says the boss wants to see you, and you think, he's going to fire me. Well, why do you want to think that? Maybe you're getting a raise in pay. No, it was my mind said, I'm getting fired. So that's the part that I want to talk about and what it does do. The soul, the spirit that we are, stands as a, a reference point of individuality that is not separate nor unique, but, but that it is diversified by its activity. But all the souls are connected to all the souls, much like the air in this room is connected to the air in this room, and to that part and to that part. And looking through the room, you say, well, I don't really see much difference. And that may be that you just haven't developed the looking ability to see what that is. The mind, however, is part of what has been referred to as universal mind consciousness. When we look at the hierarchy of spirit, and some of you have studied this, so it'll just be a refresher for you. We have, starting here at the physical level, the level above it, the imagination, the level above it, the emotion, the level above it called the mind, the level above that called the etheric or unconscious, and the level above that called the soul. Just down from the soul and the level of the unconscious sits a great cosmic mirror that is warped, by the way. A lot of people make it to the cosmic mirror and look at it and think they found the totality of all things, and they haven't because it's got a wave in it. Anything that reflects back to these worlds of reflected light, which is us here, isn't going to be showing the avenues of perfection. It's going to show pretty much what we put on it because we are painting the canvas of our own approach to life. But right in that universal mind and the cosmic mirror is where we get our mental energy to flow across this planet. The interesting thing is that the mind is both a receiver and a transmitter. Now, years ago, it was not thought to be so. But now with the ESP studies, they're finding out, yes, we do pick up on people's thoughts and on their feelings. Uh, we know that we pick up on people through emotions and through the sex drive because people talk about others putting out sexual vibrations to warm uh, towards them or the sexual vibes and we know when people are angry by what they put out it's a little more difficult to fathom the content of the mind 
the content is not what you think but it's what's behind the thinking that produces those thoughts that's the key to getting into any form of meditation is not to deal with what the thinking is about because that just goes on like a tape recorder but to move to the content of what the mind is dealing with and there are gee lots of methods of how to get to that the most uh, least successful one is meditation because that's a process of thinking and the most successful method to it is that we call spiritual exercises of moving to the spirit and by the spirit bypass the action of the mind then you get to see the mind as though you're looking down on a planet and to see the, how the mind is functioning the nice thing about that is the mind is a real tricker just about the time you think you've got it all nailed down and you know it along comes somebody who didn't read that book and shows you a different way and then it's back to the drafting board Eee, will I ever know not in the mind when you travel in the concept of dealing with the mind the highest you can go is the word level whatever the word level is that's it for the mind because that's the mind's chief avenue of expression and touching to other people the words and the soul is far beyond that now the mind sitting between the soul and the physical world has a duality aspect to it one called materialism and the other called spiritualism now I'm not talking about seance spiritualism just using the other reference point the mind as it's being taken by the soul energy and activated by the soul then becomes spiritualized and exercises these qualities inspiration discernment devotion yeah, mental devotion and these are the inward qualities that the soul has as its avenue of expression and it shares it with the mind at those moments when we're in that is when we can more successfully have attunement with the spirit in those particular moments because the spirit is infusing us through the soul into the mind and having the mind then become our uh, let's say servant now what happens then is the mind fulfilling itself with the action of the spirit of the soul and it will fill itself up like a bucket containing water then says what do I do with this and it always seems to have that type of question turns from the soul of the spirit and moves down this scale towards the world and moves into the world it isn't too long then until the world imbues the mind with the same type of action that the soul imbued the mind however it's just a little bit different when the mind goes in it picks up the soul energy and as it comes down the scale towards the psychic material worlds it moves out and starts using the senses of the body hearing touch smell and so forth to reach into the world and to see this world and at that point we all become accused of materialism and we start going after those things in the material world and our mind not having any great discernment at that point just takes it all like a garbage collector and it just reaches into this whole thing and says more 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 and then we come into these things called greed and lust and avarice then we say what happened I was so spiritual two weeks ago now I'm so lusty I can't believe it so then we say well what I'm doing now see is I was so spiritual that I got flaky and spaced out now what I'm doing is I'm just grounding myself <laughs> so and to ground myself I get to do all these things well now look we're not gonna call ourselves evil just because we got a little materialistically minded are we well why not we call our spirit self spiritual when we feel a little bit of inspiration what is it re really yo-yo just up and down, just a yo-yo. Yo-yos are to be played with. They're fun. Once you learn that the mind by itself is just a tool for sensing the world or sensing the spirit, it becomes very easy then to allow the mind to go into the material world and search and seek and look at 
and not let you as a total beingness get caught up in that so that your life becomes materialistically focused. Now, there's nothing wrong with having material things in your life. There's nothing wrong with that. Shall I tell you why? This body is material. These lights are material. Everything around you is material. And there's a law that goes with this. And a lot of people want to say, not so. Not so is there a law that goes with it. It is. It says, by the sweat of your brow do you live on the planet. Now, we become more scientific and we've said, the karma of the planet you must fulfill. And yet at the same time, while we know we've got to get out and work to make this world work here for us, we must realize that there is a king on this planet. And in the United States, it's called the dollar bill. As soon as you forget that that's king here, you're in for a real hard time because it doesn't care what you think or what book you've read or who you've studied with nor how free things should be or how free things shouldn't be. That's just the way that thing works. In the material world, knowing that the dollar is going to be the king, it's nice to know just what kind of a servant the king is going to be for you. Whether you're going to be a slave to the king or whether the king is going to be working for you, making good decisions. In the spiritual world, the soul reigns as that point, or the self, or the true beingness. At the same time, here we sit with the material world, with the true self and the beingness focusing into the material world. There's where we get our conflict in all the spiritual teachings. If it's spiritual, why do I have to pay for it? Spiritual things are free, says who? Well, says hundreds of people. Could they all be wrong? Mm-hmm. Could they all be right? Uh-huh. What is it? Ah, how many of you people get spiritual things free? Now I'll tell you the answer. Nobody. Because everything you get on this planet, in this level, you are going to have to produce some payment for it, whether it be a dollar bill, or two hours of sweeping the floor, or 30 minutes of collating, or singing for your supper, or something else. You have to put in the activity. You may have to read the books in order to get the information. Whatever it is that you put into it is your payment to receive that. Now, some people will value one form of payment higher than the other, and those people force separation and polarization. They start polarizing the action of life around you. That's spiritual, don't pay for it. That's material, pay for it. That's spiritual, don't pay for it. This, it, you pay for it. It's not so. It's all the same coin of the realm called your individual effort is going to produce for you the results of your spiritual unfoldment. Because I say so, go into all of your life and your action and look. A lot of things you thought you got free, then later on somebody came and said, how about doing this for me? And you said, oh, I owe them something, don't I? Remember when you gave them free rides in your car for a long time? Or you got the free rides in the car for a long time? Now they're saying, since you got your car, would you mind taking us for a while? Now you get to worry about the wear and tear and the gas. And you're saying, yeah, but gas is more expensive now, and, and it wasn't so expensive before, and you start running all of your na na nu nu. And they say, pay anyway. I had the most traumatic, revealing experience to me when I found out that the airlines didn't recognize that I was spiritual and wanted me to pay for my airplane tickets. How gross. <laughs> and this hotel had the audacity to ask for payment for these rooms. And they make us buy this TV stuff, they won't give it to us for free. Now, I think that's really terrible to do that to a spiritual person. However, I can play that game and walk around being disgruntled and hurt and upset and running my wrongness on them, how wrong they are, and still have to pay it anyway. That's the bottom line. You pay anyway. Or I can say, well, I'm going to pay anyway, and so I might just as well enjoy this. And so it becomes the enjoyment of the participation. We can all take and place a value on what life is and isn't supposed to be. And life just doesn't care. 
there's a statement spirits no respecter of persons spirit doesn't even respect itself why it doesn't have to it doesn't do anything negative to itself nor positive nor anything else it just is what it is do you think the air over on this side of the room respects the air on this side of the room or anything else probably not why there's nothing in separation to make it have to do something different it is all whole and one and complete it's always been that in the spirit when we enter into the physical material worlds all of those spiritual whips that we've got to use and believe me <laughs> it's easy to use spiritual whips on people you know the old statement there's nothing to fear but fear itself wait till some person comes out with a sharp knife and see how that holds wait till you get mugged and see how that holds wait till somebody says you have cancer and you're going to die and see how that holds you can say no underneath it there is something there is something and that something is called the prover and the purifier often referred to in a lot of other circles as the devil or the evil one or the diabolic uh, demon there's a lot of terms for it what do we call it negative power does that make it bad no it just makes it negative power does that make it evil no that just makes it the negative power why the negative power because that's what it is you ever drive a car and you have a battery in your car and it has a positive pull and a negative pull mm -hmm. and you put them together and your car starts uh-huh that's what this is the power pull of positivity is a spirit the negative pull of the psychomaterial world is a negative part you put those together and we come in and are able to enter into the duality of this world and have life without that we can't have life because life is a process of friction and involvement and unfoldment as soon as that ends it's called death here well is that is that serious probably not since everybody's got the disease being human is a terminal illness because <laughs> I say so no does that light on because I say so no it's just the lights on and I said it as I see it could you say the same thing sure would anybody believe you no more than you're believing me nor any less just something knows truth when it's spoken not your idea of truth because about the time you can put that idea of truth down into a statement or a sentence or a diagram, you're dealing with illusion. God knows how many other things. Any time you can label truth, that isn't it. Almost any time you can label love, that isn't it. Any time you can define God, you missed. Or your God's too small, your loving's too minuscule, and you've got yourself in a whole state of limitation, and it's easy to define you. How? Afraid, neurotic, psychotic, diseased. There's a lot of terms that can be used for this. How can we tell which one we're in? Anytime we're in a state of pulling in, we're in a state of material world beingness. Anytime that happens to us. Anytime somebody's talking to you, including myself, and you go contraction in your mind, you're in a psychic material world state of beingness. Anytime that, that you hear it and it goes through, and two minutes you say, I don't know what that guy said two minutes ago, you're in the spirit. And you don't need memory in the spirit. It is not present. Memory deals with timeline. Spirit deals with the present. Now, how do we know all this is so? Move back into the body, following the same lines of energy that you produce out in the world, follow those right back again. Well, okay, here's an example. Out here in the world, we follow the line of separation. You're there, I'm here, that makes me better than you. Of course, you're on the other side saying, he's there, I'm here, and I'm better than him. See, it works the same way. While you're sitting on the side of the street, 
talk about some stupid people walking down the road over there. Those stupid people are walking over the road or looking at you sitting there and saying how dumb and stupid you are. And they're just as good as you, even though you've said you're better than them. That just goes on. That's called people in this world. When you see that person walking down the street is walking down the street. Yeah. There they go. You're in a statement of neutrality. You are just seeing it as it moves. You don't have to do anything with that except just see it as it moves. As they come back again, you see them come back. What is the only thing you must do? Stay in the state of objectivity and just be aware of movement around you. That's all you have to do. Do you have to suspect why they're doing that? That will be contracting. You're moving back into your mind, away from the fullness of the expression of who the person is. One of the nicest things to move into the spirit of openness is when you see the person going, just say, God bless you. Or if you really want to be animal crackers, say, I love you. And if you really want to be wacko, yell it so they can hear it. <laughs> then they're going to yell back, weirdo. <laughs> but I'm sure glad. And then we need more weirdos like that who are willing to risk disapproval of somebody who doesn't know what's going on. Listen to that. To risk disapproval from somebody else who doesn't know what's going on in order for you to produce a consciousness of upliftment for them. Far too often, and listen to this carefully, folks, this may be the message. <laughs> who knows? We listen to the God of opinion run through somebody else's mouth back to our ears, and they don't know what's going on. And we bow down and worship that. And then when our life goes screwy, then we try to blame them for what they said, and yet we worship the process by which we fall. And one of the commandments is, Thou shalt not have graven images in front of you, nor idols. So why on earth do we want to worship that? Our whole society is based upon whose opinion in the poll averages out for who. The only a poll that is worth a darn is when they finally cast the ballots and they count them. Up to that point, that's another yo-yo process. Depends on whether they pleased me today or not. Yesterday they were okay, today I wouldn't vote for them. Tomorrow I'm back at it again. That type of yo-yo inside of you of forming opinions and attempting to live an opinion becomes constrictive to you. And the spirit vacates that form because it cannot live in it. At that point, what comes into the form? Nervousness, worry, tension. What will people say and think? The economy's going, this is going. We can find all the reasons not to participate in this world. And the only reason that we have to participate in this world is we're here. There is no other reason to participate here. Well, you can make them up, but just being here is enough. And being here with all of the universe and all the power and supply of the universe in your corner. And maybe more appropriately, you're in its corner. And the only thing that is lack is your inability to tap into that and flow with it as it moves through. Our job is to tap it and get out of the way so it can come through. And that's the request of, oh, God, help. And then when God helps, we say, not that way. How many times I got to tell you, not that way. <laughs> Next time we say, God, help, he says, do it your own way. <laughs> then there's this big hurt feeling, God doesn't love me anymore. It's an illusion. It's just an illusion. Somebody said to me once, well, I'll know when God doesn't love me anymore because I'll die. And I thought, I hope that isn't the criteria. If that's, if that's the criteria, he hated us all from the beginning. <laughs> he or she or it. Because there's no death. That's the fundamental paradox of the whole banana. You understand a banana it hangs with a bunch, you can just pull off any one, it all looks the same. That's why it doesn't matter when you talk in psychic material worlds. No matter what you say, you can hang it with a banana bunch. And 
the only thing you can do with that is just eat it and throw it away and hope nobody slips on it and it's just that continual process over and over of just playing the game monkeying around monkeying around then when you don't get anywhere in life comes a great question why is my life like this you know and the answer is very cheeky and it's very crude and it's very true and it's because you're stupid and you're dumb and you do stupid dumb things and you get stupid dumb results but how can that be I'm perfect that part of you that's perfect didn't get into the action yet <laughs> what part got in the part that didn't know what's going on you mean there's parts of me that doesn't know what's going on if you have to ask that question you're still in the dumb stupid area <laughs> what do I do about that it isn't wrong or bad to be dumb and stupid folks it goes with having this body that just is part and parcel have you ever looked for your car keys or your glasses and they weren't where you looked and you went back there later on and they were there now let me tell you do you think God moved them in the meantime <laughs> Get better of or I'm crazy you're crazy is it bad to be crazy no it's just crazy to be crazy is that terrible it's fun why is it fun nobody expects anything from a crazy person you can stand up and do crazy things and they'll say don't pay attention to him he's crazy well what do we get to do with all that craziness enjoy it do you have to be crazy to enjoy it in this world yes as soon as you declare yourself spiritual you cross your legs get in a full own position do this and then go very solemn and roll your eyes up and then pretend like you're doing something you know how I know that it's called pretend like you're doing something once you get to the soul you can look down all those people are doing that and say why don't you go do the dishes <laughs> Why don't you go make your bed? Why don't you go get these material things off your back and get them where they belong so when you sit down like that, you won't have to roll your eyes up and wonder what's going on. <laughs> See, the last thing we have out there in the world that we put energy on, energy could be, I should do that, or I ought to do that, or some other phrase like that. As soon as any energy goes that way and we don't complete the action, that is part of our energy drain. My idea, just look at your life. You'll see where your energy drains out. As soon as you say, I'm not going to do it, you can disconnect from that fast and the energy will fill you. Like, gee, that feels good to say, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. What we say is, I'll do that later when I have a more opportune time. Any time that you say, I'll do that later, you're already in your laters. That was put off from before. And now's the time to deal with it. And just the dealing with that in terms of going and completing it or saying, I'm not going to do it, frees up the energy of your consciousness. We do not have one or two great big major problems in our life. We got 30 or 40 uncompleted ones that add up to one gigantic, I don't know what's going on in my life. My energy drains and I get split and God, I'd like to know if I know this stuff. I've read all these books and I, I got this one half read and that one half read and three quarters over here and finish that one, finish that one, finish that one before you start the next one. Oh, I'll finish it sometime. No, finish it now because it's splitting you and it's actually being a vampire on your consciousness. It's draining you. Finish it what? Thumb through it real fast and that's it. Who said it had to be memorized? Who said it had to be done perfectly? It's just got to be finished. And you can declare finish any way you want to. It's finished. <laughs> just like, I got to make phone calls. I'm not going to. Whew, that's so nice. I don't have to. <laughs> and if I want to, I can. And I don't have to. That's a nice feeling to know you don't have to. In fact, just out of curiosity, just say this after me. I don't have to. Ready? I don't have to. Isn't that an interesting little thing in there? And the next statement goes like this. After you say, I don't have to, 
The next one is, and I can do it if I want to. Try that. I can do it if I want to. And I don't have to. That gives you a choice in your life instead of that always obligation. I'm always obligated, always obligated until I hate you for being obligated to you. And if I don't have to be obligated to you, I can be free with you. And if I can be free with you, I can love you. And if I can love you, I want to be with you. And if I can be with you, I'm going to have to be such a loving person, you won't even know who that other cad was. <laughs> but it's nice that once you're loving, you can also be a cad and get away with it. People say, how cute. <laughs> you don't think that's true? Remember the person you courted? You wanted to get married, and they did these little things that you thought were so clever. And now you're married, and you say, don't do that anymore. I don't like it. It's terrible. You say, it was cute before we are married. That was the thing you always thought was so nice. Now you're saying, don't do that. It's terrible. It's because I changed my mind. Do I have a right to change my mind? There's a question just before that. Do you have a mind? <laughs> just a question. Can I make up my mind? The question before that, do you have a mind? Well, what is the answer? Do I have a mind? Sometimes. Well, what is it I have if I don't have a mind? A habitual, a habitual moving bundle of nerves and muscles and bones just going through life and not even in a state of existence. And on a good day, you may have some compulsions. On a good day. Prior to that, fundamentally, it's vacant in there. We use the intellectual part of our beingness to decipher and discern the phenomena of the world. And when we try to use the intellectual part of our brain to know the spirit, we fail. Because we must use intelligence to know the spirit, and that comes out of the heart. Is the heart the emotional center? Yes. Does that mean maudlin, romantic, depressed? No. What is it? It is the presence of God. We understand that presence of the Spirit more through the heart than we do through any other form. Once we feel the presence moving through our heart center, We try the old game called verbalize it. And you know what we say? God is present. And people go, <laughs> God is present. What an ego trip. Sheesh. Then they say, what's that feeling? God. Hmm. It's getting more. Mm -hmm. it's, it's getting more. Uh-huh. How big is that? I don't know. I never found the end of it. Uh, what do I do with it? Don't ask that question. What's the question to ask? What's it doing with you? Oh, you mean that spirit's dealing with me? Uh-huh. How do I deal back? You don't. I'm going to deal back. What happened to that feeling? It's not present when you're dealing. It's only present when it's dealing. When we can get that fundamental difference down, we come up with these old axioms that we always say, oh, that's just a cliché. You all know what a cliché is? Something that's said over and over and nobody pays any attention to. Why? Because it's the truth. Those clichés are true. If you start looking at them very carefully and taking them apart, you'll say, God, that's true. Remember the old one called Wait on the Lord? Oh, it's just a cliché. Oh, yeah? Well, speed him up. <laughs> well, I can't. Wait on the Lord. What's this one called let go and let God? Ever heard that one? I say, well, I don't know how to do that. Well, what's let go? Relax. What's let God? Be patient. So you can take it out of the cliché statement, which is hard to deal with that intellectual thing, let go and let God, and bring it down to a fundamental, radical point of view called relax and be patient. 
Can you relax and be patient? Mm hmm. I know what those are. Can you let go and let God? I don't know what that is. Why? I don't know how to let go and let God do it. And He might not do it my way. And, and when I find out what my way is, I'll tell Him. <laughs> In the meantime, I hope that it happens real good and that I'm lucky. And, and uh, that's when we start entertaining superstition. That's when we start running. They know more than I do numbers. They know more than I do. So what? So what if somebody does know more than you do? In this room, every one of us knows something more than the person next to us in certain subjects called ourselves. There's nothing greater or nor I think lesser in that. It's, these are just statements of what is. Because that which is is just that which is. And the more every one of us can move our consciousness into that which is, then we become a whole, unified, totally present individual with all things. Does that mean we won't swear? No, you probably swear. It just isn't a swear word anymore. When you say to somebody, get the hell out of here, they do. They don't argue with you, they just get up and, and, and split. You know, that's a nice statement to have somebody say, get the hell out of my way. Because what do they want? The heaven in my way. People have said that to me. I think, gee, that's really a nice thing to say to me. Say, <laughs> yeah. I just get the hell out of my way. I'm just doing as fast as I can. <laughs> if you think I'm hell, you've got your head screwed on backwards. See, I don't qualify yet. Of course, the neat thing is I've been called the devil and I've been called God, and somewhere in between there, I mean, this must just be a centipede or something. <laughs> Some place in between all this. What are we really? We are God and we are the devil. Somewhere in between there, we are all of that. Why? Because we're made in God's image and the Spirit is present and it's perfect and we enter into the world of negativity that's going to corrupt and destroy and decay and we live here. Is any of that bad? No. Is any of it evil? Only if you define it as such. Do you know the bad news about defining something evil? You've got to stick around to make sure it's so. You've got to keep a book and keep track and keep tab on everybody. They spit on the floor, that's evil. Well, what are you going to do with this book you're keeping on people? Later on, I'm going to rub their nose in it. And what are they going to do to you while you're rubbing their nose in it? They're going to be cutting my head off. That's right. And I'll tell you why. None of us want our nose rubbed in our experiences of life. We got this far in life through all sorts of negativity and through all sorts of loving and through all sorts of manipulating and through all sorts of all sorts of things. So what? I'm present. If you're going to run my past on me, I might as well die at this instant because you will kill me daily with my past. I'd rather die daily to the past and live present right now. See, we say, but you hurt me. Fine, you handle the hurt. Don't tell me. And I didn't mean to hurt you. All I meant to do was yank you out of the way of the fast-moving car and it hurt your back. And it hurt your feelings. But I loved you so much, I didn't have time to say, would you please move out of the way so that car won't hit you? It would have been on you by then. I did what was expedient, and it was wrong, and yet it was right. Can we forget the wrong that just seems to go along with this planet and start dwelling more on the right? That doesn't mean that we become adulpated and namby-pamby and we dismiss it. No, we keep track of it. We just say, that's there, and you see where it goes. You don't put energy into it. You just observe it as it moves through life. What do you put energy in? You put energy in the spirit that is you. How do you put energy into that? By the focus of your mind and your emotions. And when you talk to somebody else, it's so easy to pick them apart physically by mannerisms, by words. That, in fact, that's such a cheap shot. Anybody can do that. And that doesn't grow you in character and integrity. And yet the difficult one that produces the most dynamic results is finding the God that is there.
the spirit, the goodness, and focus that person on their goodness, not as a form of manipulation. God, that's one of the worst ones, to manipulate people from a goodness position. I know what's good for you. That's it's almost like, don't, that'll kill me. But when they recognize that it's good and you know that it's good because that's what it is, and that affirmation of goodness is present as a direction. Boy, like looking at a little baby. And the husband and wife stand and look at it and they say, this is just beautiful because that's what it is. You can sit there and look and say, see, it's still ugly little thing. It doesn't have much hair and you know, its legs aren't too long. And it waves a lot in the air. Yeah, sure, that's all present. But is that the focus of what you want to grow? I'm going to go bankrupt. Yes, keep focusing on that. You'll create it. Or how about focusing on going through this and getting more abundance? It's called health, wealth, and happiness. Wealth isn't necessarily money, but it might be. Wealth is that feeling of wholeness and completeness and worthwhileness and value and a contributor to everything, no matter if anybody participates or not. Not that your value is based upon if somebody believes you or does what you say. The value is that you are just present. One of the, I, I think he's a great spiritual leader of our time, said uh, something in a meeting I was, uh, I heard a tape of it, and he, he made the statement, folks, this is all there is. And if this isn't enough, that's too bad. That's just tough for you, because this is all there is. And that's the truth. And it shouldn't have been period double space, new paragraph, or end a book, but more like semicolon. And you can see it more clearly by moving more clearly into the perfection of who you are. Because if that's all it is and you got your nose rubbed in it, that's not too enlightening for anybody. When somebody hits you, knocks you down, say, well, if you don't like this, that's tough because that's all there is. So we're saying, yes, that is all there is, and it is perfect. And you may not like what's going on, and it's still perfect. And you may not want to participate in, and it's still perfect. Well, if it's so perfect, why do I feel that way about it? Because you feel that way about everything. Yeah, I do. Well, not everything. There's a few things I like. What? I like getting my own way. Do you know what getting your own way sets you up for? Anybody in here ever feel frustrated? Have you? <laughs> do, you do you know what that's a sign of? Spoiled. I didn't get my own way. I'm frustrated. I can't do what I want to do. I'm frustrated. Why are you so spoiled? Because I just am. <laughs> I have a right to be spoiled. Yeah, I have a right to be unspoiled too. Oh, darn, you're going to play that game, huh? So no matter what ploy I take, I must come back to the neutral position and observe my life. There's great, great power in the state of observation. Just great power. There's less power in doing something with it. And there's less, less power if you try to get somebody else to do it. Because they're going to do it their way, not your original perfect way. Remember the statement, if it's got to be done right, I better do it myself. That's an old cliche, except it's true. Yeah. I'm going to go back to a lot of these old uh, poor Richard sayings and cliches and find out, yeah, it is. But not necessarily is that truth applicable to this time. Because the vernacular and the expression of 2,000 years ago and 1,500 years ago and 50 years ago may not be the same expression we use today. The expression can be updated with the same intent of clarity, the same intent. Take the mind, move it to the spirit. How do you move it to the spirit? Chanting those spiritual words that are tied on to the divinity of the spirit. By saying the spiritual word, you move towards the energy of that spirit. It's quite true that once you know the secret name of anyone, you can call them just like that. And there's nothing they can do but turn. 
any animal, any creature, any human, anything, once you know the secret vibration, once you know the Lord's name, the true name of the Lord, and you call on it, the essence of the Lord just flows through you and you have the divine presence with you and you become that form of divinity. Then you realize that it is perfect and there are various points of view in that. But it is perfect. That's what makes it so nice. In this room, we're going to have a hundred or so different points of view about what I talked about. And you know the nice thing about it? Each one's going to be right. And some are going to be diametrically opposed to each other and they're still going to be right. We, we use a lot of statements like, uh, the good news is that we're all here tonight. And the bad news is that we're all here tonight. And you say, well, what makes a difference? Your attitude. The key, the magic of this planet is in one simple word, the attitude. But if we just say the attitude, period, we've missed that other part that is invisible. And it goes like this, attitude, yes, based upon altitude. When you get high enough, you can have a darn good attitude. And what is your challenge, your chore? To find the steps into the altitude. To find out what it is that picks you up by your bootstraps. There's a great singer who used to go on the stage to sing. And they would say to him, why is it you're always up? You're ready to go. He says, because I bring my own crank. I keep my own self cranked up all the time, and I don't depend on anybody else to do it because they're going to do it their way for what they think I need. And I know what I need, and I know how to do it, so I do it. And he performs majestically and is very famous. We call it this, too. I've got to psych myself up. If we realize that we're saying to get my attitude clear, get my altitude up so I can participate in life to really participate, not just mentalize it, not just feelize it, but to actualize it by moving my body in and through life. That's how we live this existence, this level. Is there other ways to live it? There's other ways to exist it. No one wants to hear that they're not living their life. It's really a rub in the nose to say you're just existing because you go, oh, well, yeah, but and show them 101 reasons why you're living your life. But then when you come into the fullness of living, you say, I really wasn't. So instead of placing a judgment on what is, we can just defer the judgments till later and live life more fully at this particular time. The fullness of life is ours for the taking. Be'rish be'shamu.